please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. In between bike setups at Moto Guild, where you can rent a bench and they give you all the tools to work on your own bike, we did a bunch of work to the 750. Brake rotor cleaning with brake rotor hone. As you can see, lots of small balls and different heights. So you have to use this very carefully. I gotta hold the rotor down and so I'm gonna do what I would do when I'm painting, which is a ghost pass, just to see how much on a very light pass in terms of material it takes off the surface. So we'll get the rotation up. We'll just touch it. Okay, and we can see immediately while it put marks on the surface, it isn't really getting in here and doing a whole lot. That being said, on the outside where the worst dirt is, it cleaned it off instantly. So let's see what we can do here. Again, very light, not doing much at all. So then we can start leaning into it a little bit. Okay, safety glasses off. Well, that didn't seem to do a whole lot now, did it? Clean the edge off there. So I guess we're gonna get into this with a lot more elbow grease. There are marks on the surface, but you can't really feel them. So whatever the surface is doing here, it's very fine. And while we can see marks, it's not actually seen, it doesn't seem to be eating into the braking surface. No. So, so now we'll go full RPM and see what we get. Much better. Okay, so when you're using a tool for the first time, you don't know how it works. Step up, step up, step up, step up, and see what you need to do and where you need to go before you get a profound effect. Especially here, because the last thing we want to do is degrade this flat surface and make it wobbly by using a brake hone. So now we can just keep this still and go ahead and work this around in slow increments. So to do that, we need to clamp this in place so I can work on it. So now that's clamped. It's nice and rigid. I can work with two hands. Much better. Now we've got to be careful of the buttons. We can't damage those. We don't want to get too close to them. The other thing we want to do when we're finished is all these lines. We'll never get them out, but when we're finished on both sides, we're going to measure the thickness of the disc to make sure it's in spec. Because there's so much crud on the surface, we're going to get a false reading, so we have to clean it first. So, lots of dust, lots of fun. See you guys later. Old and new. Beautiful. Lovely plumage. You get the hang of the tool? Yeah. It's, it's difficult to use, actually. It's not as easy as it would appear. All right. That's a lot cleaner on this side. Interesting. Is that a lot cleaner on the other side? No. It must have been the one closest to the garage wall. Yep. Shed wall. Okay. Halfway done. What, that took about 10 minutes? Yeah, about that. This one will take longer because it's so crusty on both sides. 
but I'm getting the, the hang of it now, so it might not take quite as long. how to use the tool properly. Now look at that half and half. Totally different from the erosion. Now, yeah, when you learn to use a tool and get the feel for it, then you can slowly progress over time. I think you can go into business. No. You are the wood craftsman. Okay, game over. Game over. Job done. So, next task, gobs of Loctite. So we need to use a wire brush to get this off. We're actually gonna use the Dremel and just lightly touch it and try and get as much of the blue Loctite off as possible on every single bolt. The other thing we're gonna have to do is also tap through all the receiving holes to clean those threads out of Loctite as well. But this is the first and the easiest thing to do, so... All the bulk of the Loctite's off. Threads are pretty clean. <sighs> Repeat process. Two, four, six, eight, nine more bolts to go. The rotation of the wheel is here, so I know that this is our left rotor because we marked it so at this point we know that's the left rotor can't get those wrong because they're countersunk the bolt pattern only leads to the number of holes so there's no mistaking where you need to go and starting every bolt by hand is critical so the first thing people are going to jump out and say is hey you don't have blue loctite on those yet and you're accurate i don't at this point we're putting the bike together when we get ready to ride it we'll go ahead then and put the loctite on i don't want to do it now because the tires that are on it are coming off the wheels coming back out so now that that's done, we need to tighten these up. We'll go ahead and torque the brake bolts to the correct setting, flip the wheel over, put the rotor marked R, because we did this when we took them off, so we know they go back in the right place. Put that to the other side, hand tighten all of these up, torque them when we're done, which will be when we pull them out and put the blue Loctite in. At this point, because we're rebuilding the bike, everything's a dry assembly. The tires have got to come off because these are roller tires. So at that time, I can talk it all up. Right now, it's about putting the bike back together. Next challenge is to go ahead and replace these worn Cush Drive rubbers. What does worn mean? It means that that falls in. There's no grip there at all. So as soon as it will go into gear, it's going to move quite a bit. So that's way too much free play. That should not do that. That should be a fight to get that cush drive out and get it back in. So we have replacement rubbers. And you can see they're attached here by a nipple. And that nipple has a groove in it right behind it. It's significantly bigger than the diameter of the rubber before it. So it can be very, very difficult to get these out. Uh, the wheel's been in the trailer, it's been cooking, so the, the metal on the wheel is very nicely warm. If needed, I've got propane, so that we can go ahead and warm up the outside of the wheel to see if that would assist. Obviously, we can't warm up this surface or the bearing surface. And what you can't do is mar the inside here. 
So it will go underneath and you can see the float we have and you've got to ever so gently tease and see if you can lift it and make it stretch and then pop and then make sure all of it's there. So there's also two little locating rubber dowel pieces there as well. So to put the new ones in, it's much easier if you do it with some oil or grease on this, because that would encourage it to slide through, right? Our all time favorite, little WD onto the nipple. Spread the love. Okay. So sometimes this is by far harder. There it went. So that's number one. One, two, three, four to go. So with everything old, there comes a consequence. Sometimes not everything works the way it's supposed to. So if you simply push it through, it will come out the bottom because the wheels are hollow in the drum area. So it's no problem if it stays in there, just push it through and collect it when you're done later. Okay, so now that doesn't want to go in and you have to work it and fight with it for it to go in, which is awesome because that's what we need is a really super tight fit. And usually to get these going, it's so snug what are we going to need? Grease <laughs> to get that to slide in. The other thing we'll need to do because it's boiling hot is just go ahead, let this cool off a little bit because it's, it really is baking hot and see if then the rubber contracts a little bit and that should make putting this back in quite a bit easier, but it is a very precise fit and it's starting to go, but we can make that a lot easier with a bit of grease on a cooler wheel. So that's as far as replacing the cush drive rubbers or dampers, that was quite straightforward. Next up, replacement oil seals for, in this case, the cush drive and then the other side of the rear wheel. So we've got to take the old one out and we're taking the old one out so we can see the condition of the bearing inside and then clean and lube it if it's okay. If it's not, then we've got to go deeper. So to do that, we've got to heat the cush drive metal here gently, get that to expand so that this will easily leverage out without too much difficulty. So we don't need a huge flame and we don't need to get after this. We just need to basically warm it up. But don't set the rubber on fire. And I've meticulously cleaned so we won't get an oil fire on the cush drive. So before you even start this, it's got to be spotless. Now we're going to get that oil seal out. And you're twisting the screwdriver. Right? So at this point, I'm just going to see if I can start it nudging it gently. And if it won't start to move, we need more heat. It's not moving. No. Nope. Okay. 
And as soon as you do that, you can see all the lumps in it because it's metal. It's ruined. So if, this, if you're going to get this out, you're going to destroy it. So you have to commit to taking it out. Okay, round two. I'll even spark it's toasty. Okay. Ruined, good. Now we can look at the wheel bearing and there is zero grease in there. Nothing, not a damn thing. There's also quite a bit of rust in it. So technically, we should replace that. Um, let's see what we got when we clean it. So it's smooth, there's no problem there. What looks like rust may be actually old grease. So let's take a quick pass over it with the towel. And it is cleaning up, so that definitely would be old grease. Yep. There it is. So at this point, the next thing for us to do is go ahead and actually clean that bearing completely out. Obviously we've got our cush drive sitting, the interior space is sitting in there. So if we remove that, you can see on the back side of the space are all the old grease. What we don't want to do is wash all the dirt and debris into the back side of that by sitting it there. Okay, so keep it at an angle and just keep your face obviously away so that it drains out the bottom okay and then I'll come on the back side gently Wipe this out. Okay. So it's quite a bit cleaner, but there's still a, just a couple bits of old grease in there, like that corner. So if you want, you can get in there and pick it out. Don't need that in there. There. Okay, now obviously, you don't wanna pack this with so much grease that when it gets hot, it becomes a, a river of liquid grease that goes all over your rear tire. So 
in packing a bearing, generally the rule of thumb is to fill the gaps and make it level, not have it sitting level up at the top here before you put the grease seal in. So you want it level to this upper surface here, straight across, and then pack it and pack it and pack it until it literally, you push on it and it squishes out the sides. So let's get the grease. We are using Master Pro. They're not a sponsor. It is specifically bearing grease. So, at this point, we don't need to be precise and nice. Just get it in there. We can clean up the excess if there is any later. It smells good. It's a very reverent process. So the key there is obviously fill all the gaps, get everything in and deep, leave grease on the outside here because we have to seat the new grease seal in. And you should barely see the top of the main balls. So we need just a little more grease to cover that over. At this point, we can use small amounts instead of big old dubbers of it. There we go. Need to fill that air pocket. We'll clean off our wheel spacer. That's done. Clean off the interior spacer. That's done. Now we'll grease the outside of this. So it'll make seating it a little easier. And we'll grease the inside of the shaft where the spacer goes. So the reason I do it there is because you don't backfill all of this and then mess around with it. So this stays clean to keep that grease captive. There will be a little bit of seepage, but when we're done, we'll wipe all of that excess away. So at this point, We want to start that gently. Wow. Then with the rubber mallet, instead of hitting the seal, put something straight across it. And just gently tap. So it doesn't go down crooked. And stop, clean that off, clean this off. And at this point now you can see if where it's sunk and where it's proud. So that one, so that's bottomed out here, but this is not. So we need to feel where we need to go and it's right across there. So. all done. That's done. Tiny bit there. There we go. Okay, all well, that's captive. Then we just go ahead and even that grease out 
and if there's any excess put it back because we're going to keep that grease in there for this part because that slides in and we've got grease on the inside of it so that's all done a tiny dab you can see where it rides from that line so this is the outside this is the inside so just a tiny bit on it seed it and then wipe the excess off Right, rear wheel, other side, pull the spacer out. So now we've got to be even more precise heating this because that obviously there's not a whole lot of metal here between it and the bushing, plus we've got the rotor. So the one thing you can do if you're concerned is go ahead and remove the rotor, but I'm actually going to heat these metal stays that connect to the wheel and where the rotor bolt is held so it's easier that way and again because we're only using a gentle flame it'll we're just going to warm up the drum by using the step Give that a try. So what we have is a sealed bearing inside here. So we had to pack the other bearing to be able, because it was fully exposed on the race. And this isn't, this is completely exposed and has a cover over the top of it here. So what we want to do is feel if it's lumpy or crusty or uneven, not smooth. And that feels really nice. So there's no shoes there. So at this point, you also notice, let me grab that dust seal again. There's a little grease in there, but not much. But when you have a sealed bearing, where's that grease gonna go? It can't get through this to get into the bearing itself. So periodically you may wanna quite simply just say, well, that's enough, take the bearing out and replace the bearing because they're not that expensive. and. But in doing that, you need a bearing removal tool and a bearing installation tool. So seeing some grease on the inside of here, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because we have a sealed bearing. But given what we've got and we, were replaced, we are going to replace it, there's no point obviously putting grease on top of this seal. So what I'm going to do is actually grease the outside here where this replacement is going to sit. Watch your fingers, because it's hot. Okay. 
grab our new seal. So we will grease it. So then we've got grease on both sides. And then the same installation process starts by making sure you put it in flat. Whoops. Nope. There we go. Yep. Okay. So just a little high on this back side. And then just a little high right there. Okay. That's seated perfectly. As with the other side, go ahead and clean the spacer out. Get all that old garbage off there. little bit of grease on this as it sits all the way in there it goes so without grease It is a very slow physical process with a new one. Of getting that to bottom out. <sighs> feels like feels like a new wheel. So now when we engage the gear, it's gonna smash the sprocket forward and take up all that slop that we had with the really old bushings in the cush drive. Continuing on with uh, the front wheel. Again, we're doing this gently, not a ton of heat. <clears throat> Once we get a little bit of warmth in there, we'll walk it in a little bit. But we, realistically, we cannot burn that rubber seal. Even though it's coming out, it doesn't matter, because the bearing's behind it. We're getting a little bit of smoke from under the bearing, under the dust cover. Now, if it's not warm enough, this will still be a fight to get this out. We may need to go with more heat. She's coming. There it is. Okay. So, we can see there's a ton of grease in there. So that's a good sign. So now we've got to clean all of this out and see what we've got behind it. So 
So what we have is a sealed bearing. So it's completely protected and covered. So there's no exposed bolts in there. So technically those covers keep the grease that's put in from the manufacturer and trap it inside of there so it can't bleed out both sides. So the next thing now is to feel the bearing itself. There's no side play backwards and forwards this direction. And it's solid and seated on the side. No crusty, no lumpy. Okay, so that looks like that bearing's just fine. We just want a little grease to go around the lip on the inside so that it seats itself easily. And because you have a sealed bearing, you don't necessarily have to add grease in here and pack it because there's no way for the grease to get through to the bearing. Okay. And add a little grease to help it seat correctly because these are very fragile. So you've got to do this very slowly, very carefully. There we go. All right, let's leave that like that. Go ahead, warm this up again so it's much easier for the dust seal to seat. And much easier now because there's no rubber on top to burn. Come on. Seat that gently to start. This side's just a hair low. We'll see if we can even it up. There it goes. Yeah, there it goes. Now that that's there, we need something flat to go over the top of it to seat it down evenly. So you can use a socket that's the same, exact same size as a seal, or you can use a piece of wood to sit on the top and tap it down. Make sure you can feel it's fully seated so it doesn't wobble. That's good. Check and see where you're at. Just a little bit to go. There's just a tiny lip on it. There. Perfect. Yep. Wipe the grease away. We're done with that side, so on to the next side. Last job before we go ahead and put a tire on it is change the valve out. Now, if you have the proper tool for this to pull it where you pinch it at the base here and it pulls it through, you can do that. It is exceedingly difficult to get that piece of rubber to pull through when it's aged and very hard. So we're not gonna fight this because we're gonna put in some <coughs> 90 degree valve stems just to make it easier on us. And because this is old in the state of the bike, it makes sense to get them out. So if you don't have the special tool, you have a couple of options. One is you can go ahead and use a razor blade and cut it that way and force it through because then you don't scratch the rim or you can go ahead and use cutters here and cut that off and force it through. So whichever one works for you, whichever is easiest for you, you can go ahead and do either one. We'll just use the razor blade and we're gonna just work our way in.
There's one side. There's the other. Then, gotta go ahead and get this out. And that's out already. Then on the 90 degrees, you gotta know the rotation of your wheel. So, this wheel goes this direction. Because it's really hard with the bike on the kickstand, on the left, because the wheel's tilted this way, personal choice, totally up to you which way you wanna do it. I always have these facing the outside. So when the bike's on the kickstand, these are much easier to go away. So it goes to riders, right. So let's go ahead and set this one in. In this case, with the right angle stems we've got, it's 14 millimeter. So we've got the nut off. You've got to check your rubber O-ring is on, which it is. So that's good. Then we're going to go ahead, set that, set our angle. Put this on the way it came off. So we'll screw that in real quick. Okay, now we want to make sure that that is 90 degrees and held correctly before we tighten it with a 14. So, now instead of going this way, I'm gonna go that way because it doesn't need a ton of tension. So, we'll work in one face increments, checking as we go that this doesn't move off 90 degrees. So that's tightening up now. That's better. Now we're getting really tight. That's perfect. One more cinch. There we go. Now when the original rotors came off for honing and we got them done, I was smart and sensible to go ahead and put which side it came from on the inside of the rotor. So I know that this goes right as right as you're looking at the wheel, which is as the wheel goes this way, this is the correct rotor for this side. Once you pull the bolts out because there's Loctite in there, you have a couple of choices. One, use an old bolt that came out very easily and just run it up and down a few times and that'll break up that old Loctite. The other choice you have is to get a tap that is the correct, obviously, measurement for the thread pattern and run a tap in there which will guarantee that all the Loctite's out. With a tap you use a little bit of grease on it. With these you can do the same. Just a very slight coating of grease and that will pick up any residual. Either way, when you're done, use compressed air to blow each of the holes out so you've got as much of the old Loctite out as possible. And if you did use grease on the tap, as much of the grease out as is possible too. So that when we Loctite these in, we're guaranteeing there's a very clean surface to adhere to. Now we can go ahead and use a little bit of blue Loctite per bolt to seat them in correctly. And then tension them as they should be. So at this point, you don't need a lot, especially with blue. If you're gonna use green, that's fine. Not a problem, but just a little bit. That's enough. And it's enough to drain around the threads and put a little weep on the bottom, a little raindrop almost. Just take that off. So we just got enough on the threads, there we go. All right. That started, so we'll do the other four. Now we've got them all basically snug, we're just gonna go star pattern, seat them. Mm 
and seat them evenly by tension, which is a feel thing, obviously. It's the amount of force you're going to put through it. Once you've done the star pattern, just go check each one. Torque in the book is 16 and a half foot pounds. So we're going to make that as best we can. These bolts have to be in very, very good condition to do this. That's one of the old crappy bolts that barely, barely made it out. So the price of bolts, it's much cheaper, much better to get a set of bolts and put them in and start fresh, especially as this is what we're doing with this bike. And that way you know and can guarantee that when you're talking, you're doing it to the right specification and there's zero chance of that slipping. So, hold the wheel. There, there's one. I'm going to do the same thing on the torque in a star pattern. There's two, five. And for those that are in sheer disgust that I'm using this type of torque gauge, DMT is open to being sponsored by torque ranges that go beep. <laughs> and guess what? It's Christmas. Address will be supplied when requested. Thank you.